Hi everyone. If you don't know what legacy lenses are, I'm here to show you a few from my collection. Now these are ranging from anything around the 1960s, 70s, maybe 80s and even possibly into the 90s. I don't really know. I've got a few here just to show you. One thing they do offer is amazing value if you want to use them for portrait photography, street photography and macro. And for street photography they do offer zone focusing where they have the depth of field scale on the lenses so you can use that. I do have a companion guide on this, mirrorless and manual focus, and they are available on Kindle at $2.99, or if you want the hardback copy, then they're $5.99. And that covers a lot of areas, including zone focusing, pre-focusing, hyperfocal distance, and there's a manual focus quick guide at the end of the book as well. All you need is a lens adapter, and mine are Gobi, and you can buy these online for around about 18 to 20 pounds, and there's a discount code down below in the description if you want to use that. Camera manufacturers do make their own, but they tend to be around about the 70 pounds mark. One thing to avoid with these is the really, really cheap ones on eBay. So watch out for those. They could actually destroy your lens mount. So here I've got some close-up options. There's a lovely Pentax Bellows here, which cost me 10 pounds and it is like brand new. And this will get me two times life size on that pro. I've also got a M42 screw mount set of extension tubes. Now these ones came free with one of my Russian lenses. I also have here a lovely collection of Olympus extension tubes. These cost me £18. They look like they've never been used. They were on eBay four times running and didn't sell and each time I put in an offer of £18. And you can get into macro, even super macro, at super cheap prices and I will do a video on this at a later date. And all you need is one of these lenses to get going with that. Now at the front here, I've got some Russian lenses. These were all sub 20 pounds, some of those down as low as 10 pounds. This is a glossy Zebra Helios, and the Helios are the more popular ones. So this one's a little bit more rarer because of what it is. Now all of these here are the 44.2 versions. They have stepless apertures, and they are known for their bokeh. They have an amazing swirly bokeh when I opened up to F2. Going further on, I've got some later ones, a 44M and a 44M4. These were supposedly the better quality lenses. Um, they still have the swirly bokeh, a bit more robust maybe made and look a little bit more normal than these, these earlier lenses here. Right on the end here, I've got a, a little tiny Indostar lens. Uh, again, a stepless aperture on this, tiny little lens and looks quite weird on your cameras, but a, a good bit of fun and something to play around with. So again, sub 20 pounds. And in the middle here, we've got a mixture. We've got a Pentacon, which were on the original Acticas, I believe, on those. Uh, these are all 50mm lenses, apart from this one on the end. An Optimax, which is a complete piece of rubbish. That cost me three pound from a charity shop. Um, it does suffer with terrible softness, a halation. It flares terribly. Push it into the sun and it produces cyans and magentas. It's so bad, it's actually really good. It's a good lens to play around with. And it reminds me of the early pictorialist lenses. We have a Satex, which was a, an, another poor quality lens. But again, you know, if you want to play around with something really cheap, you can try something like that. A lovely little Hoya I picked up at a car boot sale. Again, that would have been about five pounds. Um, they weren't bad quality lenses when they were around. This lovely little Soliger I picked up at a car boot sale for three pounds. A really nice quality independent. At the back here I've got my Olympuses. I used to have Olympus OM1s and 10s uh, back in the 80s and 90s, so I do like Olympus. These are the original OMs. There's a 135 there, tiny 135. Uh, that cost me 20 pounds. A lovely little 28mm Tamron Adaptal 2 lens here. So the Adaptal 2 were the higher quality Tamrons back in those days. If you want to go for a cheap portrait lens that produces quality, try the Olympus 50mm 1.8, especially on a crop sensor. You won't get better value for a portrait lens. That's an amazing lens, like I say, 1.8 fast aperture and produces great portraits on the Fuji and the Olympus. So back to the Olympus 24mm 2.8, this one, and this is the most expensive of the lenses. It cost me somewhere around about 90 to 100 pounds. And you do find that these do come up more expensive. And the reason is that they know uh, there's some collectors out there and they like using these for street photography and getting hold of something like a 24mm on a crop sensor so that you're up to the realms of 35mm 
on full frame. Uh, that's going to cost you a little bit more money, unless you can pick one of these up in a second-hand shop, in which case you will get a bargain. But um, there are some bad ones about. I wanted a good one, so that was why it was £100. A super little lens for street photography, great with zone focusing. You have a depth of field scale on here, so you can make use of that. And also check with the live view in your camera that you've got the depth of field showing with your focus peaking. So that's a fabulous lens, a little bit more expensive. If you see one of those going second hand for about five or 10 pounds, snap it up. If you don't want it, contact me. Lastly here I've got a couple of uh, Pentax Takamas and these are gorgeous lenses, very very sharp. They can come up fairly expensive. This one was £10, still got £10 on the bottom there. And this one, including the camera, was £20. Same lens, 55mm f2 lenses. I've got to say a shout out to Martin who got these for me and he's, he's got some of these already and he saw those and I said yes please. So thanks Martin on those. Now I will come back to this Helios 44-2 here, which I've converted to produce some impressionist pictures. Now this picture here, that's straight out of camera, nothing changed to it, so this was through a lens conversion. And what I'm going to do is when I hit a thousand subscribers, and it's going up daily, so thank you all of my subscribers, I will do a video on how you do this conversion, and on the lens that I use, I will offer that as a giveaway on that particular video. So look forward to that one coming up. Now ideally you do want to use a mirrorless camera so that you can use focus peaking, but you can use these on DSLRs, it's just a little bit harder with an optical viewfinder. Also look at maybe something like focus check, whatever it is on your camera, and that just helps with some critical work when you're manually focusing. So I'm going to show you some results with some portraits and street photography here, it won't take very long at all. I will do another couple of videos, one on macro for you, and like I said when I hit a thousand subscribers we'll, we'll do that conversion. Also at the end I've got some tips on buying and also please subscribe and hit the like button and hit that bell if you want a notification in the future on any more of this. So let's take a look at some results on portraits and street work. Now this was shot on one of my studio training days and shot with the Helios 44-2 and as you can see we can get some really good quality out of this lens. This wasn't shot wide open, this would have been around about 5.6 f8 just to get the optimum quality out of this lens. I don't think you can complain about the quality from this lens on this image here and there's been a little bit of skin softening put in as well. Again the Helios 44, this time on a street day down at Brick Lane in London, around a middle aperture just to get the quality and it was fairly bright on this day as well. And remember with things like portraiture you don't have to hurry things along so if you're hand holding you can take your time, get the manual focus correct, plus it slows you down and makes you think a little bit more. Last one of Amy here, and this was during a coffee break at Brick Lane, and we had a down lighter with some fairy lights in the background. And I just wanted to show what you could do with poor lighting in a dark uh, basement cafe here. This was using the lens wide open this time to get that swirly bokeh, and you can still see there's a lot of quality to be had within the middle of this lens. At 10 to 20 pounds, I don't think we can complain about what this lens can do, can we? This was that tiny little Indostar, so it was having a bit of fun out doing some work for Soho Neons. This guy actually has done modelling and he was really happy to help me out as I had this sign. And um, he did question my lens and what I was using, he was quite intrigued by it all. The Indostar again, this time over at Covent Garden and I was just waiting for someone to come in and I wanted them blurred so we had this uh, wolf in the background. And if you look, the quality is good enough, I think, especially for street photography. This was shot on a Soho Neons evening, and this was with the Helios again. A little bar on the side street, and I was pressed right up against the wall, but um, the crop was good enough. And having a fast aperture obviously does help with these low light conditions as well, and the quality has come through pretty good. And this was shot with the Olympus, and I just put this together in the studio to show the quality that can come out of this lens and it does produce amazing results, shot around about f11 for the depth of field here. And this is a prime lens, and if you haven't got a prime lens, you can go and get one of these for around about 10, 20 pound, like I said, and produce this sort of quality result. Plus it puts you into the realms of apertures of 1.8 f2, and a lot of people with kit zooms don't have this option. Oh, now I'm going to finish just with a couple from that terrible lens, the Optimax, but I shot this at optimum aperture to make sure I could get the maximum quality out of this. And let's face it, that's not bad for a really bad lens. But let's take a look at the other end. 
And here at the other end, I was shooting part way into light and there's a lot of reflections coming off this building, but it produced this amazing halation and it's hard to get this with modern day lenses and it spreads all the highlights. So with these bad lenses, use some of these bad traits to their advantage. So hopefully that shows what you can do with these lenses. Just a few quick shots there. Don't forget, I've got my mirrorless and manual focus book available on Amazon if you want to take a look at that. Go out, spend 20, 30 pounds, buy yourself an adapter and open yourselves up to these amazing lenses and have some fun.